Stop trying to have passionate sex. Stop working so hard at making your sex life passionate. Passionate sex is okay. It's fun enough when it happens. If it happens, it happens. You can have a bit of fun with it. Passionate sex is not this greatest experience of your sex life. It is not the best kind of sex you can have. Don't hang on to it as such. Don't venerate it like this. Don't work so hard on it. You have much better things to do in sex. You are capable of so much more than passionate sex. You can experience things that are so much greater than passionate sex. And not to say anything against passionate sex. It's nice enough, you know, have fun with it sometimes. Just stop thinking this is the best sex you can have. And once you understand this, your sex life is going to get so much easier. It's going to be so much more effortless. You're going to be able to fit it into your life so much more easily. You're going to have it more frequently and it's going to be better, more plentiful, richer. It's going to give you more. You're going to experience a lot more. Once you let go of this idea that passionate sex is the greatest sex that you need to aim for. So I will tell you a few things today. Why passionate sex is actually not the greatest sex you can have. And also, it's quite important to understand why we chase after passionate sex so much, what is behind it. So I will tell you about that as well. And uh, lastly, I will also tell you why you can't do passionate sex. This isn't something you can do. It's just something that happens sometimes and how to integrate it organically into your sex life so that you can have it too, but you can have better things as well in your sex life. So when I put this forward, people often are confused and they say, well, what do you mean? Passion is a good thing, right? Everybody knows this. Passion is a great thing, the way we normally understand passion. Passion is this uh, energy of life for something, this zest for something. It is this commitment, this investment into something, the care you put into it, the energy you put into it, this dedication you have for something. That is passion. Uh, so we can be passionate about our work or about a hobby or about your mission or about you know, making people happy or whatever. But you see, actually, in the area of sex, that is not what we understand by passion. It means something totally different. It doesn't mean passion the way we normally understand passion in life, being passionate about something. Actually, what happens in sex is when we talk about passion, we mean this interchangeably with uh, passionate sex. So we're basically talking about passionate sex. And what is passionate sex? It is a type of sex. So we can have different kinds of sex. They have different energies, different moods. There are different things we do in them, different ways they look from the side. Um, so passionate sex is one particular kind of sex. When we talk about sex being passionate, we have a pretty clear idea in our head what we're talking about, what it looks like, what kind of energy that kind of sex has. So it is this high octane energetic sex where you feel uh, uncontrollable desire and you're so kind of intensely turned on, you kind of slam into each other, you collide and you're all over each other's bodies really kind of strongly and forcefully and there's a lot of grubbing and pushing and huffing and puffing. There is a sense of urgency, a sense of impatience to it, a sense of hunger, Importantly, there is a lot of physical energy, so it's a very physical kind of sex. There's a lot of activity, a lot of movement, a lot of physical energy. It's very energetic, it's very active. So there will be a degree of variation uh, of what uh, people would call passionate and what other people would call passionate. Uh, not everybody will need it to be super intense, like the thing you see in the movies when you're crashing through the front door and you're slamming each other against the wall and you're pinning each other down, you're ripping clothes off. So some people will say that, no, it doesn't need to be like this. It could be just really kind of sensual and hot. But generally, we all tend to have an understanding that passionate sex is something that looks quite intense, it is quite energetic, it's quite physically active to some extent, it has that uh, element of hunger and impatience and urgency to it. Even though it could be to different extents, milder or stronger, but without these qualities in sex, it would be quite a stretch to call it passionate sex. And some people will say, well, uh, I don't really understand passion in sex like this. Uh, it doesn't need to have all this, you know, crazy activity. It could be just uh, the fact that you are really uh, together and you're loving each other and you feel connected and you feel you're in the moment together and you feel you are fluid and spontaneous in sex and it's not just a routine so that for me means passionate sex i'm not sure i would agree that we genuinely uh, could understand something like this 
by passionate sex simply because I don't see what would make it passionate sex. There is actually quite a simple test to find out your real beliefs about what a passionate sex should be. So here it is. So if I draw you a picture of uh, two people making love in a very slow, very sensual way, they're just really relaxed, they're very slow, but they're having amazing lovemaking. They're feeling really loved in their body. They're feeling really connected. They're enjoying amazing feelings, amazing sensations in their body. They might even be feeling those gentle orgasmic experiences, blissful experiences flowing through their body. Everything is fluid. Everything is spontaneous. Uh, there is no routine, but they're just taking it really slow. They're in a very relaxed space. And if I told you, look at them, they're having really passionate sex. What would you say? Most people would say, mm, I wouldn't quite call it passionate. Uh, it's beautiful. It's, it looks really sensual and loving and intimate. And uh, it was really wonderful. But I wouldn't call it passionate as such. By passionate, I understand something uh, different to this. You wouldn't call this relaxed and sensual kind of sex passionate. Why? Because it lacks that physical energy. Because it's not fast enough. It's not impatient enough. It's not kind of intoxicated enough, it's not active enough, it's not energetic enough. And that would be for you what makes sex look not passionate. So this is the best I can do to describe to you the um, uh, essence of passionate sex, the spirit of passionate sex, the qualities that we understand uh, make sex passionate. So really, when we break it down like this, passionate sex is a particular kind of sex in a particular mood, in a particular energy. And it is sex that is hungry, impatient, urgent, fast, strong, energetic, really active. Now, a really curious thing here is that we have designated this particular one kind of sex as the best sex we can have, is supposed to be our greatest experience in sex. So this is curious. Why? Why are these qualities our greatest experience? Now, I'll say it again. Passionate sex is wonderful sex. It's great fun. It's a great thrill. It's a nice, sexy, hot adventure. When the mood is right, when the energy is right, it's good fun. You'll be like, wow, phew, that was a buzz. That was awesome. Sure, among all the other amazing kinds of sex, this is good, fun sex to have when the energy is right. But in our sex culture, it is worshipped. It is idolized. It is seen in these very elevated terms as the ultimate, uh, most mature, most sophisticated expression of sex. It is understood by everybody that great sex is passionate sex. If you had that passionate sex, you can say that you just had the most amazing sex. If something is not working in your sex life, you need to make sex more passionate. If you want to improve your sex, you need to make sex more passionate. If you are unfulfilled and unhappy in sex, it's because sex is not passionate enough. If sex is breaking down in your relationship, then uh, typically the advertising you will see for help for that is that you will be helped to make sex passionate again. And you will be able to continue passionate sex into the sunset. Why is it considered our greatest experience of sex? Well, I think there are actually good reasons why we... Uh, dream so much about passionate sex, why we think it is the solution, it is the fulfillment to all our hopes. We love the feeling of passionate sex, of course. It feels amazing when you're having uh, a genuinely passionate sex that is organic, that is natural. We love the feeling of aliveness. It feels really alive. It feels like a real buzz. We feel all our energies are alive because of that intensity of sexual energy in passionate sex. We love the feeling of being desired. That quality of your lover being impatient and hungry and out of control for you is your desirability. And you love how much they desire you. You feel that intensity that makes you feel really good, not just physically, but also egoically. We love that passionate sex kicks us out of our heads, throws us into the moment, gets us out of our mental noise because it is so intense, because you know it intoxicates us feel that we lose control, so we get out of our heads. And that whirl of energy feels like we really are in the moment, finally. And we interpret that as connection. And we interpret that as love. And it is thrilling. It feels like a great thrill when you're having passionate sex. So for all these reasons, we love the feeling of passionate sex. And we idolize uh, passionate sex so much that we really try to make all sex passionate. 
When it doesn't happen naturally, we try to stimulate it, we try to cause it, we try to force it, we try to fake it, we try to make sex look like it is passionate. We try to make our lovers feel that we are being passionate by, you know, just simulating the movement of passionate sex, etc. But the real reason why we feel so alive and so present in passionate sex is because normally our sex is lifeless. It feels mechanical, it feels like a project that we are trying to perform by following steps, pressing buttons. It is so often a routine, a mechanical, lifeless stimulation. It is so often focused on just getting to the orgasm. It is not because passionate sex is the most alive and the most uh, enriching sex that you can have. It is because in the barren landscape of our sex lives, the lifeless routine that sex normally is Passionate sex is something incredibly special. With the brute intensity, the brute force of passionate sex, we are thrown into a moment of real energy, into a moment of real connection, into a moment of real presence in the moment. So the attraction of it is very understandable. But the truth is that passionate sex is the best sex we've got at the moment. It is not the best sex we are capable of. We are spending so much energy and so much intensity on this brute force approach just to feel something alive in sex. And it is just so very unproductive for so many people. It just makes your sex life so difficult and actually not that enriching. And life can be so much easier. So passionate sex feels so alive. But it's because we are comparing uh, passionate sex down to this lifeless uh, routine of sex that we normally have. And if that actually wasn't our normal reality, if instead we were able to create in every moment really nice sexual energy consciously, and it felt enriching, and it felt nourishing, and we knew how to create it in each moment consciously, just create that vibration of sexual energy, moment by moment, and make each moment feel loving, make each moment feel that we are connected to each other. And then we were free from moment to moment. And we could just create from one moment to another more sexual energy in each moment. And we could then flow spontaneously into different sequences, different flows of it, different moods, different energies. This is not rocket science. This is all perfectly learnable. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of picking up a few practices, a few techniques. Uh, it's totally achievable. If you would like to elevate your sex life to a new, more enriching level of love and connection and richness, then my holistic sex course is for you. In it, I up-level your whole sex life from the place where you are at now. It is for you as a woman. It is also for men and for couples. It is for everybody. And I guide you there through the process, step by step, to your new sex life. So check out the Holistic Sex Complete online course. What happens then is that passionate sex is not the best sex you can have. Uh, and I mean this in two ways. So the first uh, way in which I mean this is that passionate sex is not the best sex, full stop. That particular statement, that is all I want to say with this. There is no such thing as the best kind of sex. There are different experiences of sex. They are right for different energies, for different times, for the mood that you're in. Passionate sex is one of different kinds of sex you can have. And other kinds of sex are not passionate because they don't have the same kind of physical intensity or hunger or urgency or impatience, but they're really beautiful uh, in a different way. They're really enriching. They can be really powerful, amazingly gorgeous and blissful and just incredible experiences in different ways. These are all different experiences of life. They're not better than each other. They're just not comparable. You want all of them. You want to enjoy all of them. So it is the same with passionate sex. It is a great kind of sex when the energy is right, when the mood is right. But don't try to make uh, all sex passionate sex. And you will do that if you think that this is the best kind of sex. Because like I said, who wants to have crap sex? Who wants to have second-rate sex? You always want to have the best sex on any given day. So if you think this is the best sex, you are only going to have passionate sex. You're going to have only one experience. You're going to miss out on all the other really wonderful, beautiful, amazing experiences of sex. So enjoy your passionate sex, but also really value and appreciate the whole spectrum of all sorts of different 
energies, different experiences that you can have in sex, how they uh, nourish you in different ways. So from that perspective, passionate sex is not the best kind of sex because it is just one of several and they're all really wonderful. But I will also go so far as to say that perhaps it's probably not the most enriching, not the most powerful, not the most nourishing sex you can have, not the most soulfully, emotionally satisfying sex you can have. You would find that it is somewhere in the middle. I always have to be really careful to not make it look like I'm saying that passionate sex is a bad sex to have or you shouldn't do it or it's like against some religion or something. I really don't mean this. When the mood is right, when the energy is right, it's amazing sex, it's beautiful, it's great. But it's good news for you. I'm committed to telling you that you don't need to have passionate sex. You can have sex that takes a lot less effort, a lot less intensity. It's much more slow, it's much more relaxed and it will probably give you more. It will nourish you more. It will be a greater, richer experience for you. It will feed you more. It will leave more behind. It will actually leave more profound aliveness behind in you when sex is slower and more relaxed. So actually what uh, passionate sex does, it creates the biggest thrill, but it doesn't create the richest sexual energy. And that's very interesting. Uh, it is the property of the body that the body, when things are slower, it can feel a lot more. It just feels more when you're slower. Somehow it tunes in more, it connects more, it awakens more, it becomes more sensitive. And when you are slower, you are really able to give a good feeling to the body better. You connect with it more. You are giving more energy to it. And there is something there in that energy that just feels more nourishing. There is more nutritious quality when sex is slower. So whenever you're doing anything slower in sex, if it is really conscious and if it's really kind of if you're really creating that sensation in the moment, uh, you will always feel more. You will always feel a richer sexual energy. When things are too fast and too hectic, you lose some of that sensation. Passionate sex has that superficial intensity. Uh, it feels uh, kind of more intense somewhere on the surface but it doesn't have that depth and that richness of sexual energy that you get in your body when you go slower. It is just too busy, it is too hectic, there's too much going on, it is too fast, essentially. Uh, it is very interesting how much richer uh, your sexual energy feels when you go slower in your body. And passionate sex is just too fast for it. And also the way you are listening to your body when you really relax and tune into the feelings in your body, you can feel a lot more. You can just uh, follow those feelings more. You can read them more. You can take them in more. You are enhancing them with your presence. Again, uh, passionate sex is a bit busy. It is really fast moving for you to be able to do that. So actually being present in the moment, being conscious in the moment is a good thing. We normally see it as almost something artificial in sex, like forced. And a good thing is to be kind of out of control and out of your senses. I completely not know what's going on. That's, that's, that's supposed to be the good thing in sex, you know, uh, to be in that state. But actually, you are out of your senses. You're going to feel a lot more when you're really with your senses. You don't need to be out of control. You are just really enjoying every moment. You're really savoring it. You're feeling a lot more this way. And all the feelings that you actually want to feel in sex, such as connection, such as love, such as being really together and really merging uh, uh, into each other, they are actually also uh, much more clear and vivid and powerful when sex is slower. There is just something in passionate sex in that respect that stays on the surface. It is too fast moving for you to really deepen into that connection with each other, into that love flowing between your bodies, into that conversation, that communication between your bodies. Uh, love in particular is really, really powerful when sex is more relaxed and it is more slow. You can feel it as a really powerful force. It is very difficult to feel powerfully loved in passionate sex. It takes great skill, a really advanced level. And if you get to that advanced level and you can make really passionate sex uh, really loving, you will see how much you are limited uh, to feel, to experience the power of that loving energy when sex is so fast and so hectic and so busy and how much more at that advanced level you will be able to recognize this, how much more you are able to feel loved and to send love and to experience the powerful energy of love in sex when you actually slow down.
And it is the same about the feeling of connection. We associate connection with passion of sex because we are using that brute force approach to throw all that massive intensity at our minds to kick ourselves uh, into this moment. But we don't need to do this. It's just not very efficient to do that. It's not very sustainable in normal life. You can just learn to be really present with each other in each moment, to really feel each other's bodies, to really feel the energy of uh, your lover's body, to love each other's bodies in this moment. And you will feel so much more connection. You will feel connection in every moment of sex without having to spend all this effort and all this energy. So it's totally not true that you need to make sex passionate and intense to feel connection. It is just about your practice. It's about your technique. We rely on passionate sex to feel connection because we lack technique to feel it. Of course, to an extent it happens. We all know that passionate sex can feel really connecting, but it's simply not the most powerful emotional nutrition that you get from sex. So talking about emotional nutrition, uh, passionate sex is venerated for being this uh, most amazing, most alive experience for your senses. But what senses is passionate sex driven by? So people associate passion with love. They think that passionate sex means, you know, your body is really loved. This is, of course, a very famous misunderstanding. Passionate sex is not about love. Passionate sex is about desire. It's about consumption. It's about wanting the body and consuming the body. Now, this is not a judgment. It's not illegal. It's not against a religion or something. Uh, it is just a fact. You know, that is what passionate sex is driven by. It's driven by wanting this sexy body. That's what you feel. And this can be a really great trip when you want that. It's a great trip to do that together and to enjoy each other that way. It's exhilarating. It's a thrill when your partner just, you know, is losing control and they are so urgent and impatient and hungry for your body. When you are in that mood, it's fantastic. But if you really want to feel loved, you're not going to be loved. You're going to be consumed. You're going to be hungered for. You know, it's a great trip, but do you want this with your partner every single day of your relationship? Is this all you want your partner to be with you, for you, as an experience in your life? Hunger, impatience, uh, consumption of your body. Is that going to have the most powerful uh, nutritional, emotional impact from your lovemaking? And actually, a lot of people in relationships have that experience. They, they have managed somehow to have this really kind of forceful, passionate sex. They feel it was, you know, that sexy consumption of each other. They have consumed each other's bodies sexually. And there is that feeling that somehow they didn't quite connect deep enough while they were doing that. So in that really busy and active uh, space of passionate sex, uh, you enjoy a particular kind of experience. It is hot, it is intense, it is a thrill. You get that kind of superficial intensity of feelings. But actually, you're not getting uh, the maximum depth and richness of sexual energy in the body because the body needs to go a lot slower. You're not getting the maximum richness and depth of your kind of feelings and the senses uh, in sex in terms of connectedness and uh, love flowing between your bodies and the deep merging together. Emotional nourishment uh, in passionate sex is essentially poor. People think that, you know, it's the greatest sex you can have with your lover. Well, what are you getting from it uh, in terms of being emotionally nourished? That your partner was hungry for you. That is the uh, emotional nutrition you are getting from this kind of sex. Again, great fun, great thrill. Nutrition, not so much. Now, you might think that I'm talking only of somebody in a long-term relationship, but actually, even people who have just met, even people who have buckets of sexual energy and they could be having passionate sex uh, all day long, they also feel more when they slow down, when they really feel into their body, when they are more relaxed. They also have richer experiences. They also expand their range of experiences. So they're not having uh, only passionate sex, but they can enjoy different moods and different energies of sex. And actually, the most powerful sex you're going to have is going to be slower is going to be more relaxed. And in that uh, slower pace, with more connection, with more listening uh, to the moment and creating uh, those sexual sensations in the moment, you're going to feel the greatest sexual energy. The deepest, the richest sexual energy is going to feel more nourishing, is going to feel more nutritious, 
and you're going to feel a lot more between you. You're going to feel more of that love and that connectedness and that conversation between you. So the most powerful sex you're going to have is going to be much more slow and much more relaxed than passionate sex. Passionate sex is just too busy, too hectic, too rushed to give you the best experience of sexual energy. And sometimes you're going to have sex where there's practically no movement at all. And you are just really tuning into the energy of your bodies and you're really feeling that love that you're sending to each other and it's going to send you into those really powerful parasympathetic states where you're going to feel an incredibly blissful and nourishing energy from this kind of sex that is going to give you a lot more than uh, passionate sex can possibly give. So look, all of this is great news for you because it is difficult to have passionate sex. It takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of intensity. And when you think that this is what you need to do um, uh, to have a good sex life, it is just really daunting. So you don't need to chase after passionate sex. You don't need to force it. You don't need to try so hard to make everything look so passionate. You know what passionate sex really is? It is fun sex. It is good, sexy fun. It is a good thrill. You are in a sexy mood. You have energy for, you know, doing something erotic, something hot. You go for it and you just have sexy fun. In our sex culture, it is made into this mother of all sex, the most kind of elevated, the most sophisticated version of sex. It is just fun sex. That is all it is. When you're in a mood for some sexy fun, you want to do something hot and you have energy for it, that's good sex for it. But personally, when I really need sex to nourish me, when I really need connection with my lover, when me or my lover, we really need love from sex and real intimacy and real connection, I would never do passionate sex. I would leave passionate sex for the day when it's kind of, it kind of doesn't matter what kind of sex you have, you just do something for fun. Uh, that's when I would have passionate sex. The important thing to understand about passionate sex is you can't choose to do passionate sex. You can't make passionate sex. You can't make your sex life passionate. That is going to be totally counterproductive. What is passionate sex? It is a state of high sexual energy. You have a lot of sexual energy and then you are expressing it through sex. You are doing something sexy and hot because you are driven uh, into sex by all this uh, high sexual energy that you're feeling. You can't make this. It's either there or it's not. If you have high sexual energy, great, that's a good day for it. Go and enjoy it. If you don't have high sexual energy, you can't just make high sexual energy by having passionate sex. It's going to feel fake. It's going to feel forced. It's going to drain you. It's going to be quite you know, difficult to find in your body, in your psyche, the resources to make sex passionate. And so many people try to do this. They come home from work and they think that sex needs to be passionate. So they try to fake it. They try to force it. They try to act passionate in sex. And it's just draining and it feels fake. You have passionate sex when you have high sexual energy. When you don't have high sexual energy, you have more gentle, more relaxed kind of sex that is really nourishing. It is really feeding you. It is regenerating you. It is feeding you with love, with connection, without spending a lot of resources of your body. By having this kind of sex, you are having a really wonderful experience. You're really enriching yourself. It's you know, wonderful when you can have this kind of sex, but you are also building up your sexual energy. So at some point, you know, over some days or whatever, it builds up and uh, you have high sexual energy again. And then you have passionate sex because you have expressed that high sexual energy through sex in the passionate mood today. So passionate sex is just a state of high sexual energy. It is something that happens when you have high sexual energy and it happens totally naturally. When you don't have high sexual energy, you can't do passionate sex, you can't make passionate sex, but you can absolutely, consciously do sex that is more relaxed, uh, that is more slow, that is more gentle, but it is really, really nourishing. And all you've got to do for this is just to let go of this belief uh, given to you by our sex culture that you should try to make sex passionate. You just need to understand that it is one of the possible kinds of sex. It is a particular kind of sex you have when you have high energy, when you just want to do something uh, kind of thrilling, something erotically fun. It is not the most powerful, the most nourishing, the most uh, emotionally enriching kind of sex. And when passionate sex doesn't happen, 
Just don't try to force it. Just understand that you don't need it. You can have even more powerful, even more enriching, even more nourishing and nutritious kind of sex that can be totally relaxed and really quite gentle. So because of this, passionate sex has seasons for passionate sex. Obviously, in the very beginning of a relationship, when people meet in that honeymoon period, there's a lot of passionate sex because you have a lot of that high sexual energy and it is constantly expressed through this passionate sex. So later in a relationship, your energy, of course, calms down and you will not often have passionate sex because you will not often have really high sexual energy. It's just not going to be very common later in a relationship. That is normal. Most of the time, you're going to have you know, fairly low-key sexual energy. So you can have that really powerful, nourishing, regenerative sex that will feed you, that will uh, nourish you. And every now and again, you will have a spike of that uh, high sexual energy and every now and again, you will have passionate sex. Or maybe sometimes you will have phases in your life brought on by something, by external events or by you know, physiology or whatever, when you might have passionate sex uh, more frequently for a period of time and then it comes down again. So these things can happen. The important thing is to see passionate sex as something optional, not necessary uh, to make good sex and something you do only when you have actually high sexual energy without ever forcing it. Because what happens when you're trying to make all your sex life passionate is that you put a lot of strain on your uh, sexual energy and on your sex life. You're having sex that is very expensive, that takes a lot of resources. All that intensity is physiology. It is mental stimulation. It is just a lot of intensity, a lot of workout, physiological workout and psychological workout. And uh, you are needing a lot of resources for sex every time you have sex, but it doesn't actually give you so much. It spends a lot, but it doesn't nourish you so profoundly with energies, with uh, uh, even for your body, but also emotionally with that love, with that connectedness. It just doesn't have enough. And then there is a lot of spend and not a lot of benefit, except to take off that you had passionate sex, so therefore you have uh, achieved it. So the advice that is normally given to couples to keep passionate sex alive, to keep passion alive, to try to make sex passionate is the worst advice. Because uh, if you need advice how to keep your sex life going, it is because it has already declined. So the sexual energy has already been depleted to some extent in your relationship. And if you're going to try to, to revive it with passionate sex, then you're going to ask of your sexual energy to be super intense and to be uh, to do a lot of spending without actually regenerating a lot and giving a lot of uh, value, a lot of nourishment to yourself from sex. So you are putting even more strain on an already depleted system. So you need to be totally relaxed about it. Let passionate sex happen when it happens, when the energy is high. If it never happens, it's fine. Let it never happen. Make sure you keep having sex in a way that keeps nourishing you with some enriching sexual energy, with love and connection. That is what matters.